Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm just gonna go through a quick basic setup of an edge router for. It's a router for a customer who had an edge router light for nine years in service. It finally died. It didn't give any symptoms or anything like that. It just finally kicked the bucket. Fortunately, I had an edge router XSFP spare laying around to get the client up and running. However, we went ahead and we ordered the edge router for it was the actual, actually the only edge router available on Ubiquiti's website. In fact, it's not available now. It's actually sold out and I purchased it for the client just about a week ago. So that said, what we're going to do is we're going to take an overhead look at what comes in the box, a closer look at the edge router itself. Then we'll go out to Ubiquiti's website, look at the specs, and then we'll just do a basic uh, configuration just to, so that I can get this client up and running. So that said, let's take a look at the overhead now and see what comes inside the box. So you get the edge router for itself. You get a power cord with a nice right angle. I don't know if you could see that a right angled power plug, which is pretty cool. You get the quick start guide and then just basically a set of screws with wall anchors in case you want to mount it to a wall. So we'll show you what we mean. Let's put this stuff over here. Let's take a closer look at the edge router for, well, the top of it has the edge router logo on it and it's all venting on the top. On the front of the unit, you have the edge router logo again, status lights, a console port, a USB three port, three RJ 45, 10, 100 gigabit ports and one SFP gigabit port. It's SFP, not SFP plus. On the bottom of the unit, you have four feet for mounting on a desk if you wish, and then you also have the option of mounting, let me get that a little closer, mounting on a wall if you want, and that's where those wall anchors and screws would come in handy. On the side of the unit, you have vents. On the rear of the unit, you have vents. Your power port is here, spot for a grounding screw and wire more vents here. And it also has on each side, the four screws for mounting in a rack. It's the actual same physical size as the edge router six P. So it'll use that same rack mounting kit that the edge router six P uses. So it doesn't come with the edge router four, but it will fit that. And it does give you the option of mounting it in a rack as well. Now that said, Let's take a look at the actual form factor. Like I said, it's the same form factor as the edge router 6P. It's about eight to nine inches in width, maybe five or six inches front to back and probably stands about an inch and a half. To, yeah, not an inch and three quarters, probably about an inch and a half in height. But we'll take a closer look at that when we switch over to the Ubiquity website, which we're going to do now. Okay, so looking at Ubiquiti's website, you can see we have the Edge Router 4, and it is a fanless router with a four core, one gigahertz, MIPS64 processor, three gigabit RJ45 ports, and the SFP port. Like I said earlier, it's just an SFP, not an SFP plus. It's got the four cores, it's got an internal PSU, it's fanless, and the options are for desk, wall, and rack mount. And let's take a look. If I click on the rack mount options, there you can see there's the rack mount option I was telling you about. And it's $15 for that kit. And of course, it's Ubiquiti's website. It is sold out. So let's go back. Let's scroll down a little bit. The Edge Router 4 sells for $199. And I did get it last week, and it just went out of stock. I guess shortly after I purchased it, I caught, I was lucky. It was the only edge router in stock at the time. Looking at the product summary, what we're going to do is just take a look at the dimensions. I said it was about eight or nine inches. It says 9.02 by 5.37 by 1.22. So I was close. I wasn't on target, but I was pretty close. The weight 795. Uh, grams or 1.75 pounds, maximum power consumption, 13 watts. It comes with the power cord, again, the right angled cord, which is cool. 
The power supply is internal power adapter, 30 watts DC. It does, oh, I did not mention the reset button on the back. There is a reset button on the back. Let's see, actually not on the back. It is on the front. Let me switch back to camera two and just, you're not gonna be able to see it, but we'll show it to you anyway. Camera two, the reset button is right here in the corner next to the SFP port. So now that we've taken a look at the unit itself and we've taken a look at the specs on UI's website, let's go ahead and get this puppy configured. Give me a second to get it powered up and we'll be right back. Okay, so let's get started with the configuration of the router. Let me at least show you what I have here. Let me switch over to the camera two. And what I have is the power cord going into the back of the router here. And then I just have a cord right from the, my computer's ethernet port right to the E0 port on the front of the edge router. Let me take you over to camera three for a second, and then we'll, I'll show you what I have going on in my network preference setup. If you look here, you can see I have my ethernet port and I just have it manually configured to 192.168.1.2 with the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. That's all we need to connect to a brand new edge router connected to the actual ethernet zero port. So now that said, let's go ahead and get started with the process. Just before we do so, I do want to mention this. The edge router light that it's replacing was installed by another company. I just want to set the stages for you. So I'm going to leave it as a very simple configuration. In fact, the original company that set this up nine years ago left everything at the defaults, not only the subnet of 192.168.1.1, but also the username and password. They left it as UBNT, UBNT, and we all know that we shouldn't do that. So, and the only reason I know that the router died, I wasn't able to log into it. But the only reason that I do know that is because the customer had the information written down, had anyone ever had to actually um, check on the router or log in. She had it written down and it was UBNT, UBNT. So anyway, that said, let's switch over to, let me get rid of my network settings. Let's switch over to the, edge router and let's get it set up now. So let's go over to a browser and let's just log into 192.168.1.1. And we're gonna say show details and we're gonna say visit this website. And it's just asking me to authenticate. And now we have the logon page for the edge router. So the default is UBNT, UBNT. And we're going to agree to the terms of this license agreement and click login. And we're not going to save the password. Okay. The router is in default config. Do you want to start with a basic setup wizard? And I'm going to say no. And the reason I'm going to say no in this client's case is because I do want to update the firmware. It's running version 1.10.7 out of the box. And I want to bring it up to the latest version of 2.0.9 hotfix whatever 2.5 something. So I already went ahead and I downloaded the firmware prior to uh, setting up the router. So we're just going to go ahead. I already have it saved on my desktop. We're just going to come down to the system tab and we're going to come to where it says upgrade system image. We're going to upload a file and we're just going to search for it on the desktop. And here it is right here. ER dash E 300 dot V two, et cetera. We're just going to say upload. And then we should be prompted eventually to restart and reboot. And we'll be prompted with a couple of screens that say, are you sure? Yes, et cetera. You sure? Are you sure? Yes, et cetera. And then the system will reboot once the file has uploaded successfully. Okay, in order for the changes to take effect, you will have to reboot your device. We're going to go ahead and reboot. Here's the first confirmation. And then, are you sure? And we're, yes, I'm sure. Okay, the firmware is successfully updated. The router rebooted, and you can see here, it says now Edge Router 4 version 2.09 hotfix 2. And we get the message here, 
help us improve our product experience and stability by sharing some of the selected statistics and analytics data data with us. So I'm going to say do not share. It gives you the option to either do not share or allow. So I'm going to say do not share in this case. Now that we have the firmware up to date, let's go over to the wizards tab and we'll come over and we'll choose in the left column WAN plus two LAN two. And we're going to go ahead and now and start, go ahead now and start the configuration process. So we're going to leave the WAN port as ETH zero. You have several choices on this router. We're just going to go with ETH zero. Again, you can choose DHCP static or PPPoE. The internet service providers in this area use PPPoE if it's fiber and DHCP if it's cable. This customer is going with the fiber provider. So we're going to say PPPoE. And now I'm just going to copy and paste her information in. There we go. So now that we have that in place, we're not going to set a VLAN connection on the WAN. We're going to enable the default firewall and we're just going to go ahead and disable IP version six firewall. Use the DNS service providers provided by the internet service provider. We're going to configure DNS servers. We're just going to say 1.1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1. Dot one. I mean, you could leave it set to the option of use servers by provi provided by the internet service provider, but I like to point my clients towards Cloudflare. So we're going to go ahead. We're not going to bridge any of the ports and we are just going to continue. And for right now, we're going to go ahead and leave the existing user, but then we'll change it in the next step when we go back into the router. So I'm going to, at this point, say apply, apply changes and reboot. And yes, I'm sure. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to swap out the ethernet cable from ETH zero to ETH one. And I'm going to change my computer from the static IP to a dynamic IP. And hopefully we could log back in after we receive an address from the edge router. So stick around, I'll be right back. Okay, looking at the network preferences again on my network card, now I've changed the ethernet connection to DHCP. You can see here it pulled an address of 192.168.1.38 from the edge router four. So now that we know we're connected, let's go ahead and sign in again. Let's reload. And it's asking us to sign in. So we're going to do UBNT, UBNT. We're going to tell the computer not to save that. And we're going to click over to the dashboard. And if we look, we could see that ETH1, it's set up as 192.168.1.1 slash 24. And ETH2, it automatically set up as 192.168.2.1 slash 24. And that's perfectly fine. The existing company set up a 192.168.1 network. So we're going to go with that off of ETH1. So the next first thing we want to do is go down to the system settings. And we're just going to customize this here a little bit for the customers. I should put in my UNMS key. I'll come back and do that in a bit. Let's look and see what else we have here. Name servers, we're going to put in 1.1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1.1. And we're going to leave everything else as is, and we're going to go ahead and say save. I'll come back and I'll do my UNMS key in a minute. Okay, now that we have that set, let's go and just check. We created the, the default firewall rules, which is just fine. Let's look at the NAT tab. And it created the masquerade rule, which is perfect. Excellent. Let's go over to the services tab. And it created DHCP servers for LAN 1 and LAN 2. So we're going to go over to LAN 1 and we're just going to take a look at the details. So it starts it at 192.168.1.38, but I'm going to start it at 
50 for this client and end the range at 254. We're going to leave it set to 192.168.1.1 for the router. We're going to put the secondary DNS here in as 1.1.1.1 and we're going to go ahead and save. Now I'll do the same thing for LAN2. Now we'll look at the DNS tab and we can see that it has show, it does select the interfaces ETH1 and ETH2. And that's a pretty large cache size. I think I'm just going to leave it by set to default, but I think that's pretty large. Usually it's 150, but we'll go ahead and leave that as is. Let's go over to the users tab and we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a user. I always add an account for my company. So in case the user doesn't know their information or they lose the information sheet that I provide them. I always know I have a backdoor in. And we'll say save. Oh, I have to put it in twice. There we go. Okay, and now we're going to log out. We're going to just test logging in with both of the additional accounts that we created. So let's go ahead and log out of UBNT. And we'll log in first with the account that I created for myself. And we can see we're able to log in. We'll try logging in now with that username. And that password and both work. So now that I can confirm that both user accounts work, I'm going to go back to the users tab and I'm going to delete the UBNT user completely from the router. All right. So that was a really quick and simple setup. The edge router four is now set and ready to be delivered to the client. It'll just fall into place nicely with the rest of the network switches and access points that the previous company set up. I'll get my Edge Router X SFP back and put it back on the shelf as a spare. During this process, we went ahead after we updated the firmware, we went ahead and we ran the setup wizard, the WAN plus two LAN two. It set up the firewall rules and the DHCP servers. We just, we just tweaked the DHCP server LAN settings. And then we just went in and we added some users. Once we added a couple of users and tested that the logins actually work, what we did was remove the UBNT user completely from the net, from the router. So this is a basic setup. It's good to go. This customer will have internet access once we plug the router in place. So I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of the other videos that I have listed here up above. Please remember to subscribe like and share this video. And I want to thank you as I do in every video for using the Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they really do help out the channel. My name is Tony with quick tech solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. And as always, I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters. And if you would like to help support the channel, there's links to the Patreon page and PayPal down in the video description.